All right, now let's get into some embossing folders. So these are, of course, no, no problem. So these are the texture fades. Again, these are deeply uh, etched embossing folders. So these will go through um, metal. This will also emboss packaging. Obviously I did that during 12 tags. Um, it'll do grunge board and chipboard. So the all over design, it's much deeper than the other folders. So you can get that deep impression into it. The texture fades are kind of your all over texture. I did a few different things for this show. I did one release of sewing pattern that's gonna actually give you your all over pattern. And with this same pack, you're going to get three stitch borders. And these are hand stitch borders. So these are really rough and rugged. So we've got our X stitch, we've got our straight stitch and our really eclectic zigzag. So these come in the same set. So you can emboss it and then emboss the stitching around it if you want, hit it with an ink pad, whatever. Then I also did these, and this I think is what's getting the most buzz for these. These are called texture trades, and these are just smaller folders for artist trading cards. If you're not into artist trading cards, you can still use them on gift tags, you can use them on all smaller elements, and you get three in a pack. So for example, the game one, you're gonna get your ticket, bingo, all of that. And here's what's great about it. Let me show you a couple of things. Because of the way these embossing folders work, for example, I'll just take some canvas. You can do this on fabric, canvas, metal, anything. So this is a sticky back canvas artist trading card. Again, you're gonna put it between your two plastic pieces, whatever ones you have to do, any of your cutting pads. You're gonna put it on your platform because it's thin. And we're just gonna run that through. I know it's easy, huh? No cranking. And then when I run this through, I just want you to see how deep this is on fabric. So this is regular fabric. So you can do this on denim, you can do this on anything. This isn't treated with a stiffener or Mod Podge or anything. It's the force of the embossing folders. That's what makes these so unique. And I mean, you can take it and even if you take off the paper backing, you still have that. But I mean, that's in your fabric. So yeah, and that's adhesive back. It's pretty cool. So you could ink it and paint it. And that's really the thing, like I talk a lot about uh, scrapbookers, for example, that want to do continuous borders or continuous ribbon. You can go in and cut through your embossing folders. I mean, I do. You just take a little craft knife, cut a little slit right on the seam. Don't cut it completely in half. But then if I had a 12 inch strip of paper, I could start it and emboss it, pull it through the folder, emboss it again, pull it through, emboss it again. So you can get a continuous pattern um, to put like, again, a border across a 12 by 12 page because by cutting through the seam, you're not gonna break down the integrity. You're not chopping it in half. And if you do, not that I have it, <laughs> I have it. Um, you can just take a piece of packing tape and cover it up and mend it right back together. It's not a problem. But I think that's what's really fun. Great question. If it's thin paper, some designs will actually cut through. And here's some options. If you remove the shim, just unclip it, that right there is gonna relieve some of the pressure. So if you're just doing paper and you find that it's cutting it, remove the shim. If you're still having trouble, then you can emboss two pieces of paper. You know, whether it's just scrap typing paper, whatever, because again, that's gonna relieve the pressure and then you don't have that problem of it cutting through. Yeah, Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, because some of mine, I mean, uh, you'll notice that a very distinct difference in the Sizzix design and my design. I mean, it's mine is a bit more edgy and sometimes I do push the specs to the limit. Um, you know, especially on the playing card one that has all the detail. Yeah, yeah some straight lines. Straight lines are pretty bad, but you need straight lines. I don't want everything to look bubblegum. You know, bingo card needs lines. It can't be like all balloony. Um, so let me show you something else we can do with these folders that's pretty fun. I think I'll do a smaller one. We can do like, we can do our umbrella man, we can do the wings. Let's do this one. So we can, um, a lot of these embossing folders, not just the texture trades, but also the texture fades, they have a large opening space, you can see right here. Any of the ones that have, even these detailed space that have the smooth area, you can also work with stamps on this. So uh, with Stampers Knowledge for this show, I did one stamp set. I know people are like, oh. Uh, it's called Reflections. And basically what it is, it's three different backgrounds that are printed in reverse, they're backgrounds. So when you look at it, everything is backwards, imagination, your numbers, but they're designed to work with the texture fade. So here's how we can use it. Let's see if I have, I think I have an archival pad. So I'm gonna have to swing it with her 
ink pad. We'll see. I'll try it with distress. I prefer archival, but I can make it work. All right. So here I'm going to go in. Let's just take this one. We'll do some French script. Just going to place it onto a block. Now this is great because you can use it on a lot of different things. I better just do a smaller one. Let's do a postcard one. So when you open it, the first thing you have to understand is which part is going to be raised or recessed. That's important. So we want to stamp where our design is actually recessed into the surface. So you just kind of feel it to make sure because it really looks the same to me at this point. Then you're going to take your ink. And you can work with any ink. Again, I prefer to work with archival. And when I find, Mario, can you get me an archival from Ranger? Thanks. I prefer to work with that just because um, it tends to not smear as much, right? Distress is really fluid. So if you're not careful, and usually I'm not careful, you can smear it. But that's all right. I'm going to go for it. And we're just going to stamp it. And I'm going to stamp this right onto the folder where my image is recessed. Oh, recessed. Recessed, yep. So we actually are hitting the raised smooth side. We're not really hitting in the recessed area, okay? Then you're gonna take your material, whatever that happens to be. Just use that. And I'm gonna, now I'm gonna place my paper on the uninked or unstamped side. And this could be anything, and I'm just gonna lay this down. Put it in between. This is just like home. Yeah, it looks like, well, really, it looks like pretty much every crafter, right? You start out nice, you start out clean when you got here, and then creativity takes over and it's a bit chaotic. You have to look at up with that little space, it's about seven by eight. That's right. And then what happens is it's actually going to stamp everything forwards now. So all of our script is now going the right direction. So it starts out backwards, but when you print it, it then flips it forward. And now I can go in and if you use, let's say, your blending tool now, because my image, you can see, my image is untouched. My raised part is now untouched. So now when I go and ink it, I actually get the best of both worlds. I've got a cool background that is not affected by the foreground. It's pretty cool. So in addition to using reflections with your texture fades, you can also use them on other stamps. In other words, you can ink up a solid stamp and you can stamp it with a clean reflections, which then lifts ink off the stamp, and then when you stamp it down, it's frontwards. You gotta check out the video on the blog, really. Once you see it, you just have that like, aha moment, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I mean, that's really what I always like to, thanks, that's what I always like to encourage is really utilize all the products together. I mean, I think that's what's important. You wanna use your dyes and use your stamps and use your papers and use your inks, use everything together. And because this is plastic, really, whether you're using Distress or Archival, you're just gonna wipe it right off. It's not gonna damage this at all. You can take it in the sink if you wanna wash it. It's still just a piece of plastic. Don't put it in the dishwasher. Then it's an embellishment. Um, but yeah.